Rampart's magazine called Clark Clifford a curious hybrid of Rasputin, Perry Como, and Mr. Fixit in an article that depicted him as an architect of U.S. economic imperialism and linked that role to his legal work representing major multinational corporations. BCCI, meanwhile, had its own connections. Prominent figures with ties to the bank included former President Jimmy Carter's budget director, Bert Lance, and a bevy of powerful Washington lobbyists with close ties to President George H. W. Bush, a web of influence that may have helped the bank evade pre previous investigations. In 1985 and 86, for instance, the Reagan administration launched no investigation even after the CIA sent reports to the Treasury, Commerce, and State Departments, bluntly describing the bank's role in drug money laundering and other illegal activities. BCCI known euphemistically as the Bank of Crooks and Criminals International, catered to many of the most notorious tyrants and thugs of the late twentieth century, including Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein, the heads of the Median cocaine cartel, and Abu Nidal, the notorious Palestinian terrorist. According to the CIA, it also did business with those who went on to lead al-Qaeda. BCCI went beyond merely offering financial assistance to, di to dictators and terrorists. According to Time, the operation itself was an elaborate fraud, replete with a global intelligence operation and a mafia-like enforcement squad." Unquote. The Wall Street Re Journal reported in 1991 there was a quote, mosaic of BCCI connections surrounding Harkin Energy since George W. Bush came on board." Unquote. In 1987, Bush secured a critical $25 million loan from a bank the Kerry Commission would later reveal to be a BCCI joint venture. An Italian intelligence report obtained by the Washington Post in 2002 identified dozens of companies and individuals who were involved with BCCI and were found to be dealing with bin Laden after the bank collapsed. And the financial network operated by the bin Laden today, quote, is similar to the network put in place in the 1980s by BCCI. As one senior U.S. investigator said, BCCI was the mother and father of terrorist financing organizations, unquote. Clark Clifford and Robert Altman ran First America, taken over by BCCI with the help of Jackson Stevens, connected to Lippo Wortham Bank. In court, the parties were represented by Robert Fisk, Robert Bennett, Jamie Gorlick, Webster Hubble, and Hillary Rodham Clinton. Clark Clifford and his former law partner, Robert Altman, were indicted in July 1992 on charges of fraud and accepting $40 million in bribes from the foreign-owned Bank of Credit and Commerce International. Both were charged with concealing from federal regulators BCCI's secret ownership of First America's Bank Shares Incorporated, the big, bank, the big bank holding company in Washington that they had both headed since 1982. The two had also been attorneys for BCCI as well. They denied the separate federal and New York state charges against them and said they were duped by BCCI's Pakistani executives. Clifford and Altman abruptly resigned from First America in 1991, a month before BCCI itself was indicted on allegations of massive fraud, laundering of drug money, and supporting terrorists. BCCI pled guilty in 92 to federal racketeering charges and agreed to forfeit a, ref a record $550 million in U.S. assets from the Washington Monthly. The Pakistani ISI was used by the CIA to conduct a clandestine war against the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan. The covert plan was the brainchild of Zbigniew Brzezinski of the Center for Strategic and International Studies. 
The United States faked an attempt to overthrow the Soviet puppet leader in Afghanistan, and the USSR was tricked into invading. Then the CIA funneled arms to the ISI in Pakistan to launch a guerrilla war using the Mujahideen to tie them down in a Vietnam-style quagmire. The plan was executed by Bill Casey under Ronald Reagan. During this time, the 1980s, the heroin trade exploded, and Osama bin Laden, fighting alongside opium warlords like the CIA protege Hikmatyar, gained experience in guerrilla wars and terrorist tactics. The U.S. believed that the Taliban was a group that could unite the country and provide a stable platform for the construction of oil and gas pipelines. When the Taliban took power in 96, it was orchestrated by the Pakistani ISI and the oil company Unocal with its Saudi ally oil company Delta. The Washington Post reported that a quiet U.S. military buildup was taking place in Kazakhstan Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan for months before the 2000 presidential election. The plans for the invasion were initiated during the Clinton administration. Opium production was banned by the Taliban and 80 percent of the world supply, 450 metric tons of pure heroin worth many billions of dollars, went offline. Direct secret negotiations between the U.S.-led 6 plus 2 group, Afghan neighbor neighbors Pakistan, China, Iran, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Russia, and the U.S., occurred through the State Department expert for South Asian affairs, Carl Rick Enderfirth, who negotiated directly with the Taliban. These negotiations failed to yield an agreement, and George W. Bush was elected. There was a flurry of meetings over pipeline issues, and then the military option that had begun under Clinton was put into motion. As far back as 1997, U.S. military personnel had been quietly dispatched to Central Asia, and by June of 2001, it seemed as if the die was cast. Under current U.S.-sponsored Afghan government, led by former UNOCAL employee Ahmed Karzai, the warlords of Afghanistan now control the production of successive record opium harvests. Heroin production in the area under their control is now estimated at over 550 metric tons of pure heroin from Rupert Murdoch.